Deserts. Written by Kara Freed. Focus question. What are the features of the desert biome? Space and stillness. If you search online for descriptions of deserts, you're likely to come across phrases like empty wasteland and barren, desolate landscape. Deserts have a reputation for being harsh, unpleasant places where life hangs by a thread and no one in their right mind would dare to go. If you talk to people who love deserts, however, you'll hear a different story. To them, deserts are places of stillness and beauty where you can hear yourself think and see for miles in every direction. There are also places with living things that have developed fascinating ways to survive where water is rare and precious. The Desert Biome Different types of environments cover Earth's surface. These regions and the communities of plants and animals that live there are called biomes. Grasslands, rainforests, and oceans are examples of biomes. So are deserts. Many factors play a part in creating Earth's biomes. Two important ones are latitude, how far a location is from the equator, and elevation, or height above sea level. Both help determine how warm or cool a place is. Climate, land, and water are also important building blocks of biomes, as are plants and animals. People often think of deserts as hot, empty places with endless miles of sand. This description fits some deserts, but not others. The defining trait of deserts is not heat, but rather low rainfall. As a rule, deserts receive less than 25 centimeters, 10 inches, of rainfall each year. About one-fifth of Earth's land is deserts. Every continent has deserts, including Antarctica, most of which is considered a cold desert. Cloudless skies for many days in a row are common in hot deserts. That's because the humidity, the amount of water vapor in the air, is often too low for clouds to form. When they do, they may produce rain that evaporates before it reaches the ground. This kind of rain is called virga, Precipitation varies depending on the type of desert. Some deserts may go a year or longer without any rain at all. Long dry spells can put deserts at risk for wildfires. In fact, wildfires are more common today than they were long ago. Global warming is causing droughts as well as higher temperatures in many desert regions. In cold deserts, much of the precipitation falls as snow rather than rain. Warmer deserts may have one rainy season or two. Sudden, violent rainstorms in some deserts can cause flash flooding. Thunderstorms often produce strong winds, and in hot deserts, these winds kick up a great deal of sand and dust. On occasion, the winds create haboobs, huge walls of sand and dust, that may be nearly three kilometers, two miles high. Wowzer! The hottest temperature in the world was recorded at Death Valley in California in 1913. The temperature was 57 degrees Celsius, 134 degrees Fahrenheit. Daytime and nighttime temperatures in deserts can be very different because of the lack of humidity. In wetter parts of the world, the humidity tends to hold in heat after sunset. In Chihuahua, Mexico, daytime temperatures can reach 37 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, while nighttime temperatures on the same day can drop below freezing, 0 degrees Celsius, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Types of Deserts While Earth's deserts have an amazing amount of variety, they can be grouped into four main types. Hot, dry deserts. These deserts are the hottest type and also the best known. Although the weather is generally warm all year long, temperatures can reach extremes in summer, as high as 49 degrees Celsius. 
120 degrees Fahrenheit. They can drop quickly after dark, especially in winter. Rainfall may be low year-round or occur in short bursts between long dry seasons. The largest hot, dry desert, the Sahara in Africa, is almost as large as the continental United States. Other deserts of this type are located in southwestern North America, Central and South America, South Asia, and Australia. Semi-arid deserts. Semi-arid deserts have summers that are long and dry, though not as hot as those in hot, dry deserts. Winters are cold, with little rain or snow. In North America, Nevada's Great Basin Desert is a semi-arid desert. So is the Colorado Plateau, a large region that covers parts of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. Spain's Tabernas Desert, which is Europe's only true desert, is also classified as a semi-arid desert. What's a rain shadow desert? Some deserts are dry because mountains block moisture from reaching them. Warm, wet air moves up one side of a mountain range. Clouds form, then drop rain and snow. When that air starts down the range's other side, it warms again, and the clouds disappear. The result on the far side is a rain shadow. Coastal deserts. Coastal deserts are usually located along the western edges of continents. Cold ocean currents along the coast produce winter fog and often block sunlight. The weather in coastal deserts is very dry, but not extremely hot. Summers are warm and winters are cool. Average yearly rainfall is usually 8 to 13 centimeters, 3 to 5 inches. The Atacama Desert, South America, and the Namib Desert, Africa, are both coastal deserts. Cold deserts. Cold deserts have long, cold winters with high snowfall. Summers are short, and the snow can stay frozen for years. Most of Antarctica is cold desert, as is the Gobi Desert, Asia, the Patagonian Desert, South America, and most of Greenland. Desert plants. Because deserts are so dry, very little liquid water is available for living things to use, but adaptations allow them to live in habitats with low precipitation. Desert plants have three main survival strategies. One group of plants, succulents, store water in their roots, stems, or leaves. Cactuses are succulents, and there are many others as well. Most succulents have thick, waxy skin that holds in water. They often have shallow roots that enable them to quickly absorb any rain that falls. A second group of desert plants drop their leaves and become dormant during the dry season, then quickly spring to life when the rains return. Some plants in this group, including mesquite trees, have a long taproot that reaches deep underground to find water. A third set of adaptations involves avoiding drought altogether. Plants in this group, including many desert wildflowers, mature quickly and complete their life cycle before the dry season begins. They devote their energy to producing seeds that germinate when the rains return. Photosynthesis in the desert. Plants produce their own food through a chemical process known as photosynthesis. This process involves taking in carbon dioxide gas through tiny holes called stomata, which are mainly located on the underside of leaves. Chlorophyll, a green pigment in the leaves, helps plants capture sunlight to make a simple sugar called glucose from carbon dioxide and water. Because photosynthesis requires sunlight, most plants conduct this process during the day. However, opening their stomata causes them to lose large amounts of water, which would be a problem for desert plants. Many desert plants conduct photosynthesis without losing much water. They keep their stomata closed during the day and open them at night 
when the air is cooler and moister. They store carbon dioxide overnight and use it the next day to make food. Palo Verde trees have a different way to conserve water. They drop their leaves during especially dry periods to avoid losing water. However, they can still make food because of the chlorophyll in their green bark. Desert animals. The lack of water is also a challenge for animals, as are the high temperatures in many deserts. Few large mammals live in hot deserts, compared to most other biomes, because they don't tolerate the heat and lack of water well. Many desert animals, including squirrels, avoid the heat and conserve water by staying in the shade during the hottest times of the day. They hide away in a burrow or under rocks or vegetation. Others, including owls and small Australian marsupials, known as bilbies, are nocturnal or active at night. Still others, such as rattlesnakes, are typically crepuscular, active at dawn and dusk. Some desert animals, including bats, migrate to other locations during the hottest or driest times of the year. Desert toads become dormant while waiting for rain or cooler temperatures to return. Desert animals have other ways to stay cool as well. Coyotes pant, while owls flutter their throat. Jackrabbits and fennec foxes release body heat through their large ears. Bighorn sheep shed their winter coat in stages, with their belly and other shaded parts losing hair first to help body heat escape. Getting enough water is another challenge for desert animals. Many feed on succulents, nectar, or sap. Others, especially reptiles and birds, release waste that contains very little water. Some desert animals have very unusual adaptations that help them get water. For example, thorny devil lizards have grooves between their spikes that absorb collected dew and send it to their mouth. People in deserts. People have lived in deserts for many thousands of years. Today, roughly one billion people live in this biome, about one-seventh of Earth's population. Like plants and non-human animals, people have had to adapt to find enough water to make their homes there. Traditionally, desert dwellers have been nomadic, moving with the seasons to find water and food. Protective clothing has shielded them from sunlight, as well as sandstorms. In African and Asian deserts, camels, sheep, goats, and horses have often provided transportation, as well as milk.